Welcome to another long tutorial video. But that's okay though. I'm gonna try to break this video down as best I can so that you, the two first runner, will be able to run three first with minimal headache. What is all that gonna include? Well, for the, the spots in the run that you don't really have too much of a transition or too much of a change we're gonna just gloss over that stuff i might just play through it like it's a normal run and if there's anything in particular that i think a two first runner needs to know i'll make sure to mention it my name's jsr by the way and welcome this video is intended for a very specific person although it will help new runners and it may help experienced runners this video is targeted specifically towards the runners who run two first in the Legend of Zelda any percent no what bay. Whether or not you have the blue ring, whether or not you get the white sword, whether or not you've attempted three first, basically, if you are a two first runner and you'd like to know what the best way to transition to three first is, this video is for you. And there's a, quite a few differences. Um, obviously, three first is harder. Obviously, three first is faster. Obviously, three first is three first <laughs> but there is a couple of things that a lot of folks when they're starting to run this game they don't learn right away and they don't really have the necessity to learn so before we even start on the route i want to go over a couple of things with you first and foremost is in combat um if you're a two first runner and you fight dark nuts let me get the uh buffet started up i'll just go ahead and use a save state that way we don't have to go through the entire game and make sure i got safe states going um this is not going to be professionally uh, edited video or anything like that so i apologize if that's what you're looking for please don't hate me um i'm just going to load up a save state here let's go this one if you fight dark nuts like this you may want to reconsider your combat Don't do that. A, it's risky. B, it's slow. C, it's dangerous. And D, it's wrong. So Dark Nuts, let me show you guys something real quick. I'm going to, when we actually start the, the route tutorial, I'm going to be having this target on the screen. You see that little arrow? It shines on Link and then it goes across the screen. That is a targeting mechanism. Each and every enemy in this game has a targeting mechanism timer an rng timer it's completely random based on like a number of different calculations and algorithms we don't know what, what it is but you can kind of guess what it is and and basically i don't want to get too into it because you don't need to worry about it terribly but there are a couple rooms in the run you're going to want to know about that i'll explain those in the tutorial as we go uh combat each individual enemy that is going to be uh advanced i'll go over but there is one technique I think everybody should learn before they go to three first. If you're not already fighting enemies like this, you probably want to learn and practice doing it. And the best way to practice is to come to level three with your wooden sword. So Dark Nuts, we want to fight them on the full tiles. We're going to do stuff like this. See how I'm just poking at them with the sword and then running away? I'm immediately pressing the away direction as I stab them. This is what I call a sword whip. I don't know what it's actually called. But basically, it allows you to potentially hit two enemies with one hit. It allows you to kill enemies just as quickly as stabbing them like that. But the biggest thing is if he turns on me, I can run away. I'm not a sitting duck. So it's a defensive offensive maneuver. It's quick, it can hit more than one enemy, and it allows you to escape if the Dark Nuts or Wiz Robes or Gliok or whatever enemy you might be fighting. Uh, turns on you there are a couple exceptions where the 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 whip isn't necessarily a good thing like for example if you're trying to get your beam to go through an enemy and hit another enemy behind him um if you're trying to hit an enemy from across the room with your beam um if you're trying to pick up an item things like that there are exceptions but for the most part i'd say 90 percent of the combat in this game it would be a a benefit to you to learn how to sword whip like this. All it is is pressing a direction opposite of the direction you're facing while your sword's out. 
and you'll whip your sword. It's actually possible if you're on the full grid to, to do a spin attack, but it's pixel perfect and it doesn't really help much. Very few opportunities for that to actually help. You, you'll probably do it on accident more than you'll ever do it on purpose. But you can actually whip back and forth more than one direction on a single sword swipe. Although that doesn't help much because iframes are longer than your sword will be out. So it's not like you're going to get two hits with one sword swing, unfortunately. But especially in like the Gleok fight and all that stuff, we're going to go over it as we go. You're going to want to know how to do that. That's the most important thing. The second most important thing, and it's right up there with it. It's neck and neck. If you're not already doing this, um, do it now before you start this tutorial or start learning it now. Counting. Now you've all heard the puns, the jokes, the, the memes, and of course, you've probably heard Zelda runners counting as they do runs. There's a reason for that. There's two counters, a global and a consecutive, and there are certain parts in the run where global is important, but from a two first runner who's coming over to three first, it's a lot to absorb quickly. Honestly, I didn't start counting globals until I was sub 30. That might have been a little later than it probably should have been. I probably should have started around sub 31. But if you're just starting out, you're probably your first runs are going to probably be in the 33, 34 ballpark. Um, maybe even slower than that, depending on if you get a potion and, you know, how much experience you have on two first. My first three first run was a 34, I think. But I came over from 100% no up, which is another great stepping stone. If you play two first and you're struggling to come over to three first, uh, but it's not the beginning game that's giving you issues. Uh, you may want to try 100%, especially if you're having trouble with level nine, getting the red ring. Um, that's how I did it, but it's everybody's different. So it's really hard for me to give a, a tell-all answer. Um, at the end of the day, you want to be comfortable with counting consecutive, and you want to be comfortable with combat. If you, don't, if you need a refresher, the consecutive kill counter, if you kill 10 consecutive enemies, Without taking a hit, the 10th enemy will always drop a 5 rupee, unless you kill the 10th enemy with a bomb. You can store that item by killing an enemy who does not drop an, an item, I, I, like, a, like a keys or a like-like. Um, but that item will, will disappear if you take a hit, and it can be overridden by the fairy. So, those are the basics, as far as that stuff's concerned. Um, the best defense is a good offense. Um, but getting hit is the biggest time loss in this game. Screen scrolls are nice to do, but you don't need them. Uh, I would only scroll on a three first route into three, into five, the world wrap, and anything else is bonus. If you're having trouble with scrolls, don't worry about the scrolls. It's two seconds per screen. And if I remember correctly, uh, I consider the screen scrolls to three, pretty mandatory they're right at the beginning of the game so if you can do them do them uh the scroll to four it's two seconds the two scrolls to one that's four more so you're at six seconds uh the three to five that's a whopping 12 seconds that you'll gain if you scroll or lose if you don't but how much time are you losing if you're failing to scroll over and over and over that's your call if you really want to master the screen scrolls you have to do them um so it really comes down to what you're willing to put up with and what you're willing to do in order to make this run stick. Um, the faster you get good at the advanced stuff, the faster you're going to be pushing the sub-30 uh, boundary and stuff. One other thing I want to touch on before we start the actual tutorial, because we are already 10 minutes into this thing and I haven't even started the tutor bleh, tutorial yet, is routes. There are a number of different routes, numerous amounts. There's like at least 20 that all start with level three first. From the more advanced stuff, like the Kanana route, the Mamba route that I'm trying to, to pioneer, the, uh, the classic the world, world record route, which is at this moment, not the world record route for the first time in six years. That is the three first blue candle route, the 30-30 and double hundo variants of that. Red candle, TBF route, the three four two route. There's so many routes. Honestly, as long as you're going three first, Pick whichever, whichever one you're comfortable with. I still recommend when you go to three first, um, trying the double hundo classic world record route out as your main squeeze because it's going to get you comfortable with getting through the dungeons. Um, there's very little bomb pressure compared to some of the other, the other routes. Uh, double hundo takes all your rupee pressure out. 
So all you really have to do is work on counting for bombs, and it's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. Um, obviously, you have to be good at the game. You can't just jump into it and expect to be good. But if you do, if you are going to start with three first, you didn't listen to me earlier, and you're starting with three first, three first double hundo. And that is the route I'm going to be demonstrating in this tutorial. Now, if you're not learning that route, there will be subtle differences in enemy spawns and a couple of the strats. I'll try to, glance, to glaze over those, but like I said, there's like 20 routes. Um, if you're not comfortable with routing your own route out, um, check out Order of the Eight. Uh, Red Candle has some stuff, and obviously go to the Z1 Discord. We're all there. Um, I'll put a link to all of those in the description below. Okay. So let's start off the run. This is the practice ROM, by the way, Buffet. It is amazing if you don't already use it. If you press select, you can instantly transport to any level screen. You can change Link's position. You can go to here, change all your counters, all your counts. Uh, you can go to here, give yourself all the items and power-ups in the game. And you can even change some of the stuff as far as spawns are concerned and whatnot. We're not going to be using any of that right now, but something to keep in mind if you want to practice a specific spot. This, this ROM allows you to pretty much practice anything in the game you want. So we're going to grab the wooden sword. By the way, little known fact, although if you are streaming your attempts live on Twitch, um, or if you watch a top tier runner, you may have already known this, but if you hold right as you enter caves where the item is directly in the center of the screen, you can then hold up and right and you will automatically frame perfect walk into that item. And it's a minor optimization, but it's free. It's literally free. Do it. Just do it. So let me turn on a couple things real quick. We're going to turn on targeting. And we're going to make it so transitions are timed. What this is going to do is it's going to give us our exact um, time on each screen. And it's going to show our targeting, which is going to be nice to know when you're fighting certain enemies. So three first, you're just going to come on over here. If you don't already know how to screen scroll, seventh pixel if you're standing straight up. Five, or sorry. Fifth pixel, if you're standing straight up. Um, just make sure if you miss it, you reset the scroll by walking away from it. You have to be on the next tile over. I usually, if you're just starting out, just get the pixel. You can even go slow like I just did. Um, just make sure you get in. Don't kill Mateo. This is Mateo. Mateo's a jerk. He's a troll spider. He's bad. And the reason he's bad is if you kill him, your global count becomes one. You won't be able to get your bomb chance. And we're going to go for that bomb chance. Now... In level three, there are two routes that are popular. There's the bottom route and the top route. Um, you'll hear a lot of jokes and memes and, and preferences. By the way, the key in this room, is, uh, we commonly call it the Lack key or the Zol key. That I call it the Diaga Zol key, whatever you want to call it. Uh, on this route, we don't get it unless you want to get it. Um, for new runners, I recommend not getting it. The time save is minuscule and it's risky. Um, and you won't get your bomb in the next room unless you get hit. I just say for new runners, skip this key. We get this key in two first. You're not going to get it in three first. Just get through the room. Sword that guy, get through. Remember, you don't have the white sword. So Zoles are not going to die in this dungeon. They're going to split. And uh, when you do split a Zol, you will not increase the global counter. Uh, you will not increase the global counter when you kill the gels that come out of Zoles, but you will increase the consecutive counter and if you actually i'll show you real quick if you hit a zone against the wall listen to the kill count the kill sound see how it made three uh two kill sounds that actually counted as three kills compared to that where it hit him back that didn't count as a kill at all um that's a kill mechanic that you have to get used to as well when you start counting anytime you hear that kill pop compared to that thud that's a kill uh, experiment with buffet if you're not familiar with that sound you'll be able to see the difference but you really want to make sure that you're keeping track of your counts especially in level three because we need bombs coming out of here and our first bomb chance is in this room if you're doing bottom route now i'll go through top route real quick but top route is really only if you're trying to get money or if you just don't want to kill these dark nuts for whatever reason um but top route comes up here I like to get this key, some runners don't. I think you should. It's not that bad, just get the key. That way you have the extra key. Then you come in here. You kill these keys. And there's your bombs. And then you can come in here and grab this key. It's a very minor, minor, minor time loss compared to the bottom route. And then you would come down here and you would have a count that would give you a five rupee. 
take a bop intentionally, and then there you hope to get a bomb. If you don't get a bomb there, the run's dead. That's top route. If you really just want to get a bomb, you can take an intentional hit after the Zoles and get your count back up. Don't do that if you're a new runner. Just come in here. Remember how we said to fight Dark Nuts? Stab them and get away from them. See, he turned on me. Now, I did not get the bomb. For top tier runs, that's a reset because you're going to lose like an additional three or four seconds in combat here. But when you're, when you're first coming on to two first to three first, don't stress it. Just kill all three Dark Nuts carefully. And there's your bomb. Grab your bomb. Take your time if you have to while you're getting used to fighting Dark Nuts. Take your time with uh, getting the hang of that combat. Remember that Dark Nuts can only move on half tiles. They can only move on half tiles, and they will always turn when that arrow counter changes. You can't see that value when you're playing the game for real. So just be aware of it. And obviously, if the Dark Nut turns, you probably have about a tile minimum of movement before he's going to turn again. So strategically position yourself in a perpendicular direction of this Dark Nut and just come in and kill him. So if you get the bomb off the floor, your count's three. If you got the first bomb, your count's either one or zero, depending if you got hit. Um, whatever your count is leaving this room, make sure you remember what it is. The last time you got hit, how many Dark Nuts did you kill? Start counting. Even if you have to do it out loud, start counting. You want to count in this level, it's important. Since we killed all three, we're going to try to just get to five without losing too much time. So just deep the traps, come on through here, and just get through this room. Try not to get hit. That dark nut control you sometimes, but it's rare. This kill right here is going to give us five, get the key, and now we have a five count. Sometimes the bubbles will hit you. That, that will happen. There's not much you can do about it. Try to avoid them. Um... You can use pause strats. I really am a proponent of using pause strats if you're trying to keep your count. A lot of runners are not. Uh, every time you press select, I'm paused using select right now. You can read the room. If you know what direction that bubble's facing, for example, which way he's going, you might be able to, to you know, take a second if you need to. It's just a second. You'll lose more time getting hit and losing your count than you will taking a quick, okay, he's going that way. Oops, all right, he's gonna hit code up. Okay, I'm good, whatever, I'm good, I'm good. I got around the bubble, see what I'm saying? Sorry, I reloaded my save state because my save state hockey is a uh, select. But that's another strat you can learn, it's an advanced strat. It helps a lot with like Gleok if you're down to one hit left, you're about to die, and you don't wanna die, you can use pause strats to get around Gleok. That's a huge help. The only enemy don't use pause strats on is Ganon. <laughs> Just don't do that, it's a bad idea. Uh, the fireballs will... It's bad. Just don't do pause strats against Ganon. Anyone else, pause strat away. All right, so our count's five. We're going to try to get an atomic bomb here by dropping a bomb there, but sometimes we don't. All you're going to do is kind of just walk the dog. You're going to drop the bomb in a direction they're not facing. There's our forced bomb, and we got one random. The reason we kill five enemies, not just because that, tenth, that, that last kill is our tenth, but there's two bomb drops on six and eight. So the first and third Dark Nut we kill in this room, even if we got hit, has a chance to drop a bomb. That's how we set our globals up that way. You always want to have a five on the globals, and preferably somewhere in the neighborhood of like three to five coming into this room on the consecutive. If you're over, it's fine. You're just going to overwrite one of your, your bomb counts. In fact, you can actually get up to a six, and you can still get two random bomb chances and a force because... Remember, the first kill, the number one kill is a bomb chance, and your, your force bomb is going to be on 10. So if you're on a 6 here, you're going to have a bomb chance, you'll have a bomb force, and then you'll have another bomb chance. But you always want to have at least two random bomb chances in this room, because you're probably going to get one. You might not get any, but as long as you have that count, you'll always get your force bomb. You really want to leave here with 8, if you can help it. Remember, there's advanced strats that involve getting money, but you're doing double hundo. You don't need to worry about that right there. So as you come in this room, you're just going to hold down and right. Just hold down and right, stab there, and you'll walk right into the staircase frame perfect. Same thing here. You can hold down right to you're down here, and then just come up here, collect your raft. Watch out for the bats. It's more time loss than anything right now. You're not going to be too worried about losing your count for the rest of this dungeon. Um, just try not to get hit because it's bad. You don't want to lose time getting bopped. You can hold up right here, it's frame perfect. 
And then in this room, just get through. So we're about to go into Manhandler. And Manhandler is a jerk. Especially on 3 first, because you can't use your white sword to finish him off if you miss. That's why you want to have as many bombs as you can. You need at least one bomb to kill him, but obviously you want to have more, especially if you're just trying to get runs started. So when we come in here, if you're on bottom route, he's going to spawn up there. Now if you're on top route, let me see if I can bring up a, a, a quick uh, pointer or something that you can use as a, uh, as a, a pointer. So the bomb. See this bomb that I now put on top of Manhandler? Typically he's going to spawn right about there. And he's going to probably move in this area. Sometimes he'll come up here, sometimes he'll move right. Sometimes he'll move in this area. I wish it wouldn't freeze. It's freezing for some reason. Stop it. Stop it. Ugh. Sometimes he'll go over here. Stop it. Good God, I can't move the, the bomb. It's freezing. There. Sometimes I move over here, but usually he's going to come down in this area. So we're going to aim our bomb right there. If you're on top route, he's going to spawn way over here. It's a lot harder of a fight. You're going to have to kind of read Manhandler's movement. You're going to want to drop the bomb slightly off center where he's going to roll over. You don't want to blow it up right in the center of him. If you do, it's not the end of the world, although it, it does make it much harder to continue your run. Um, unless you have a, a count of at least five coming into this fight, a direct kill will not drop a bomb because a direct kill will count as five. Um, let me see if I can do that real quick just to showcase that. So he's going to come right there. Did that count as a five? Yeah, see, that counted as a five, but because I had a five count, I dropped the bomb. But usually you're just going to want to drop it like right there. Now, if that happens, don't panic. His, his movement's very sporadic. Um, if I had known this was going to be his pattern, I could have done that and killed him. But I didn't know that. So you can drop it like right there. See how he kind of rolled over it? That's what you really want. But all you're going to want to do is kind of just don't panic and see when you can get a clear shot for him to come over your bomb and drop it in. A lot of people will panic and start dropping bombs in this general area. And you'll get lucky from time to time. But you also have times where you drop the bomb and nothing will happen and you'll lose the run. So, Manhandle is a gatekeeper. He's hard. You're going to lose runs in this room. I've lost more runs in this room outside of the first factor and the second factor and three than probably any other room in The Legend of Zelda. I've probably lost hundreds if not thousands of runs in this room. So don't fret if you do. That's normal. If you are able to get it in the pocket... Let me see if I can get a good pattern for that to happen. That will happen. See how I made like a machine gun, like, brrrah, sound? That means you did good. That rolls the counter big time. That can, that can get you a bomb even with the zero count. That's what you want to do. It'll be a one bomb kill, and you'll get your bomb every single time. That's what you want to do. That'll take some practice. Um, if you absolutely run out of bombs and you have no, nothing left, you can go for the Hail Mary with this wooden sword but you're probably gonna die. Just back to life. Welcome to three first. <laughs> Come on up, grab your Triforce. Now, you notice my count is at zero. If you are able to force a bomb on Manhandler, then your bomb counter will always be at zero. There's a slim chance your fairy counter could still be in play, but it shouldn't matter too much because we're about to go to level four. So unless you kill something on the way, it may not even come into play. The fairy counter doesn't come into play much until level two, maybe level one, depending on what your route is. Um, but for now, just be aware that it exists. There's a slim chance you could end up forcing a fairy in level four, but it's unlikely. It's very unlikely. So level four is the next level in line. We're going to come on over this way. Um, you really, really need bombs. If you don't have bombs, kill these guys or reset. Um, I would say anything less than four bombs, you're in trouble. Anything more than four bombs, you're probably okay. Obviously, you want eight, but if you have anything less than four, just probably kill these guys or just be aware that you're going to have to force or your run is dead. You need bombs in four for a multitude of reasons. Not only are they faster, but you need two in order to bomb through the ladder clip screen, which I'll touch on in a moment. And then you need one in level one uh, to bomb through the wall. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of time. Now, I'll show the backups if you don't have bombs. But frankly, you just for 
to be optimal on the route, you want bombs. That's why counting is so important on this route. Come on up. This is your first non-required non screen school. I say that because if you walk around to get here to go three first without a screen school, you lose like 20 seconds. It's ridiculous. 20, 30 seconds, something like that. And you're very likely to kill something which may or may not overwrite your bomb chances. So I would say if you're ever going to learn a screen school, the ones to three are, are probably required. Not necessarily. You can get there without it. This one is not required. This is very optional. If you're bad with screen scrolls, you can just walk this screen. Try not to get hit and keep an, keep an eye on how many you kill. It is important. However many enemies you kill here, I got hit. My count is zero. My count's one. You know, like whatever you do, my count's one. But obviously walking the screen is much more dangerous than just setting up for a scroll and doing that. Now you're through. It's safer, it's faster, it's easier. Well, for me. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so real quick, uh, on this screen, if you have a clear shot to get to this tile, which is in the middle of this area right here, you want to do that, and then you just want to walk up. If you don't have a clear shot, you can come right here, and then just come over to this middle before you go up. The reason you want to do that, I'll show you, I probably won't be able to get that actual spawn, but you see where Zora spawns? Zora can spawn right behind the dock. If you don't want Zora to hit you, um, you're either going to have to dodge the fireball or, you know, get lucky. But if you're on this tile that I'm on now, if you're where Link is coming under the screen and you hold up, you will never, ever, 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 ever get hit by Zora. No matter what. No matter what, Zora cannot hit you. Even if she's right above that dock, she will not hit you. So that's a, a Darkwing Duck strat, by the way. So level four is probably the hardest level on three first from an execution standpoint. You need bombs. There's a lot of enemies that you can't kill with White Sword. You normally can. And Gleok is a pain in the butt. Gleok is going to be the hardest thing for a three first, or two first runner to learn coming to three first. So you're, this room is kind of nice. You can hold up. And usually just a couple swords will get you through without having any issues. Sometimes you'll have issues. It's rare. It's rare. If you have issues, you can always stop and just read the room. If you really have issues, just wait for a second. See until they clear up and then you can go through. Remember, getting hit, getting hit is huge time loss. How huge is getting hit? Let's find out. We're going to do two swords to get through this room. It was a 434. Now we're going to get hit after we do one sword. We just did two swords. We lost 34 frames. That's half a second. It doesn't, 34 frames doesn't sound like a lot. That's half a second we lost in one room. If you get hit in every room, that adds up. You lose half a second if you get knocked backwards in a scenario where you're just trying to get through. Keep that in mind. The best defense is a good offense and not getting hit. Back attack always said it. Don't get hit. So we killed two in that room. Our, can our, our bomb count is at two. There's some fancy shenanigans you can do with your global here. My global's at six. I would probably try to get it on eight if I was going for a rupee. Um, you can even go for a candy rupee if you wanted to and set up your count on a nine where your, your bomb would be forced on the 9 on the global, and then you'd have a shot at a Brupee. Don't worry about that. That's advanced shit. Sorry. <laughs> advanced stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't mean this to curse. I'm trying not to curse in this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's advanced. Don't worry about that. For your first couple runs, while you're learning the route, just focus on bombs. Your count is two. Come to this tile, and then go up. And then sort up. You'll get a couple kills normally. And then you'll have a straight shot to the door. Sometimes you'll have a real straight shot to the door. See? Easy, easy room. Easy game. Alright, this is the dark clip room. A lot of two first runners already know how to do this. Um, there's a little bit of a visual cue. It's pretty much right when Link's feet get there. And then you can pass through. Um, if you're absolutely not okay with it, once you get to this point in the room, right about here, right past this halfway point, you see the visual cues in the floor right here. This is, this is where you want to go up, right here, then over, and then up, and then you can get through. Slower, obviously, and it's riskier, and we went over in our bomb count, so we're not going to get a bomb. So, try to learn this. Get to here. If you miss it, just tap yourself up a little bit. This is about where you want to be. Then press left and sword, and 
go on through. Eventually you'll be able to do it. Well, of course now I'm not gonna nail it at all. Eventually you'll be able to do it quick. Okay, so this is the most important room in the run if you do not have eight bombs. This room will make or break your runs. For a number, number of reasons, the biggest one is this room is so detrimental or beneficial to your count. Now our count is five. There's five zoles in here, and every zole every that we sword will either increase our count by two or three, or one if we're careful. We want to get our count on nine. Or we can get it to eight and bomb two zoles. So I have a zole here. I killed him against the wall. There's an invisible uh, lake right here. So watch my counter. Now my count's at eight. Look at those zoles up by the door, right? And there's my bomb. Now my count zero. I know my count zero because all those zoles died simultaneously. That will always be the case unless they die a frame apart. If they die anything other than simultaneously, they will never ever increase the count past zero if the count lands and you get a, a forced bomb or a forced rupee. So in this case, I got a forced bomb. Even though I killed three of them and my count was eight, my count is not 11. Or in this case, it'd be 21, I believe. Um, my count is 20 because they all died simultaneously. If they had died a frame apart, even just a frame apart, that would not be the case, and my count would be one or two depending on how that worked out. So something to keep in mind. Just try to kill enemies like that simultaneously. Um, but yeah, you want to force a bomb here because now we know our count is zero and we have bombs. We can go fast in the next couple rooms. So when you come in here, you can just hold up and write. And hopefully we won't see this room again. But if you do, I'll explain why in a moment. In the NSU, this is another very important, very underrated run in the speed or room in the speed run. You have five buyers in here. If you bomb all five, your spawns will change in the back half of five, and they will not correct themselves by the time you go into level one. You do not want to bomb all five buyers here. It's almost rip run if you do that if you do that you're gonna have a bad time don't do it to avoid this i always recommend to sword the first buyer the one that's down at the bottom of the room let me get my bomb uh my bomb pointer out again this buyer right here i always like to sword him and i'll show you a trick for that but if he goes up you can bomb him if you want just be aware that if you do you still need to sword one of these other buyers um in a Perfect scenario, you're going to want to try to sword four of them down. It takes some practice. Remember, your count is zero. If you sword four of them down and then bomb the fifth one, your count will be nine going into the breakfast room every single time. He went down. That's perfect. I'm going to whip my sword. That way the beam goes behind me. And that's two. I ended up bombing five of them there, and I got a count of seven. Seven's not great. But we have seven bombs, so we're probably okay. Um, in a better scenario, you'd only bomb one. You could do something like this if you really wanted to. Oh, we got a clock. That's something that some people will actually manipulate on purpose. Now, remember, you don't want to let these keys get away from you. So if you hit them against the wall here, they're not going to fly into the, uh, the water unless you catch them on the full tile so if the if the buyer's on this tile and i'm here and he's coming towards me and i hit him he's gonna fly across the room but they can't fly backwards um if they're heading up and down in this case and i hit him this way he's gonna continue going down he's on that tile he's on that grid um so if they're going up and down in here and i hit them from the side then they'll get stuck against here they can still get stuck in here in there if they're in this area, but sometimes they'll fly across the room. Just practice this room. Uh, get the hang of trying to get your count to nine when you go into the breakfast room. Take some practice. And there's a lot of different strats in this room, but this is one of those rooms that's kind of... Everybody has a little bit of a different way to attack it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure you get as many bombs and or the highest count you can going into the breakfast room. Some runners will force a bomb in this room. They won't force a bomb in the Zol room. And that's fine too, you can do that. Uh, some runners will go totally yippee ki -yay and try to get a global bomb in here. And you can do that too, it's just risky. I wouldn't do that. 
Unless I was in total desperation mode trying to bring a run back. Like, for example, say you get hit in the Zol room. You get hit in the Zol room. Your count is now zero to two or something like that. You could set up a bomb force in this room if you wanted to. Or you could just bomb them and hope you get lucky. You gotta bomb some of them anyways. Coming into this room, I, my global was at two. So if I'd bombed four of them, I would have had one bomb chance. But that's pretty advanced stuff. And that's up to you if you want to even mess with that stuff. That's why I recommend using Buffet. Buffet is great. It'll help you to visualize what's going on so that you won't have to think about it as much during a run. That's, that's how you're really going to get fast in this game is when these strats become muscle memory and you don't have to think about them. Alright, breakfast room. The most important meal in level 4. Ideally, we want these like likes to group together. But we want to also make sure that no matter what, we do not leave this room with less than three bombs. If you leave with less than three, you may not get through four. You need at least two to get through four, and you really want one for level one. And the only enemy from this point forward that drops bombs, that can drop bombs with the wooden sword kill, is the blue Octorok outside of one. Otherwise, you're going to have to go way out of your way to farm bombs, or you're gonna have to get an extra key and go around in one. And I'll show you that when we get there, just as a backup plan, but you really don't want that to happen. So keep an eye on your bomb count here. Make sure you have a good count coming into this room. Make sure whatever, you, no matter what, no matter what, you wanna leave this room with at least three bombs and you're gonna to wanna to work a bomb on the way to Gliok. It's important, it's hard, it's not easy. This level four sucks, level four sucks. But this is where the differences between three first and two first really come to light. This is the section of the game that's going to take some practice. It's going to take some mastery on your part. This is not an easy pick up and go kind of thing. It seems like it. It seems like it. Okay, we come in here. We bomb this guy. There's our bomb. Oh, we got a bad pattern. Oh, I got hit. Better get that bomb before it disappears. Oh, we got a clock. That's kind of cool. I mean, that wasn't a terrible room. By my standards, it was a terrible room. <laughs> but for most runners, that's not a terrible room. Um, that's a very fluid situation. If I go back out here, hopefully it doesn't change my spawns. It did. And now I got that. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, well, anyways, uh, the like-likes, they're not always going to come up. Sometimes they'll go in a different direction. Sometimes they're gonna go away from you. Sometimes they'll come towards you. Sometimes one will come towards you and one will go away from you. If you have an opening to bomb them together, do so. But make sure you force that bomb before you get swallowed by a like-like. Like-likes, they like-like to turn quickly. And as soon as their hitboxes touch Link and they have huge hitboxes, they gobble you up. If they gobble you up, you take a hit, your count resets to zero. Bubbles will also reset your count, and bubbles are annoying. So this is one of the hardest rooms in the game. You're going to want to practice it. Um, so if you have a nine count, probably my strat would be to set up right here. Make sure you bomb him. Get your bomb to form. Try to knock them together. And then just patiently wait for an opening. Bomb that guy. Get out. We have six bombs. We have full health. We got kind of lucky. But... That room is one of the most difficult runs rooms in the entire run. It's gonna take practice. It's gonna take some. You're gonna lose runs in that in that room too. I've lost countless runs in this room. Um, it's one of the most important. Now, if you got hit during that fight, and or in the ra the ladder chamber, and or you got bubbled, your count's gonna reset. If you do not know your count, leaving the ladder chamber. It is worth the time loss, especially if you're low on bombs, to take a bubble bop and get your count to zero. That is so important. Even if it costs you that half second we were talking about before, it's worth it in this case if you do not know your count. If you do know your count, we want to force a bomb in the next Vire room. The next Vire room is a few rooms away. There's about uh, eight keys and five gels that are in the next two rooms with combat if we kill all those enemies 
our count's going to be a 12. You don't want that. We want a nine or around a nine, like somewhere between seven and nine is best. Obviously, as close to 10 as possible is best. Um, and I'll go over that when we get to the buyer room. But you really, 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 really want to try and make sure that you're, you're, you know your count leaving this room. It's, it's so important. There's only one room in the entire game where your count is more important than here, and that's in level nine. And we'll get to that at the end of this tutorial. So coming out of here, this is the ladder clip. And if you don't know the ladder clip, I'll show you how to do it real quick. Um, and then I'll show you the alternate. You can do this if you're gonna be comfortable. The bomb will explode anywhere from here on up. I believe actually it'll explode here. Let me see. Make a save state. I think it's gonna blow up there. Yeah, does it blow up any lower than that? What about here? No. So it's right there. Yeah, that's the lowest pixel that Link has to be for that bomb to explode. If you don't already know about bomb walls, check out redcandle.us. Yunos is amazing. Made a great picture that shows you where you can bomb to blow up these walls. The hitboxes are huge in dungeons only, I might add. Um, so you can bomb that wall from all the way down here and it'll explode. So what I like to do is I come into this room, I kill the first gel, oops, Oh well. I kill the first gel, and then if I need to, or if I want to protect my beams, I'll clear these, these gels out. Get them out of the way. Then I'm gonna to try to just let go and land on the pixel. That's exactly what I did right there. That is the pixel you want for the ladder clip. As soon as I let go, as long as I see that I'm past that pixel, I drop my bomb. Then I'll set up for the clip, and when I'm on the correct pixel, I'll tap left and I'll go. And that's, by the way, how you do the ladder clip. If you are not comfortable with the ladder clip, unfortunately, your alternative is not great. Also, if you're out of bombs, this is the only way to keep the run going, and it's not great either. Um, keep in mind, if you, if you open the door in the NSU room that I just came out of, and you open this door, you're going to be short of key. So make sure if you're going this way, you don't open any other doors. You need that key. You're going to have to come up to this room, and over here. If you don't have bombs, you have to fight him. And you don't want to fight him. That's the manhandle of shame. And you can't beat him. I'm one of the best Zelda players in the world. Let's see if I can beat him. We're full health. Oh god. Nope. <laughs> you can beat him. I'm not saying you can't. You don't want to. It's slow, it's dangerous, and you still don't have bombs for level one. If you run out of bombs in four, your run's toast. It's just the way it is. That's why counting is so important. The room to the left of this is that room before Manhandler with the virus. You can go in this room if you want, but if you bomb in the Manhandler room, it'll take you into the Rupee boss room, which is where we're headed now. We're gonna drop the bomb, get to the pixel, hit the one frame tap, and we're through. By the way, real quick, uh, the one, the pixel, you want to see that light brown pixel of the ladder above Link's head. That's your visual cue. You see that one pixel. If I don't see that pixel, I'm too high. That's not going to work. If I see any space at all, or if I see that brown pixel, which I don't, actually don't think you can land on that. Yeah, I don't think you can land on that. Um, then you won't be able to get through. And if those guys are in your way, you can sword while you go through too. It's kind of a cool trick. So we killed four gels in that room. Our count is four. We need to be careful. You can drop the bomb on this rupee, and it'll blow up that wall. Pick up all these monies. You might as well. They're free. Uh, if you pick up both of the far rupees, you're going to lose about a half second. It's up to you if you want that extra rupee. It's free. I, it's a half second time loss. It's up to you if you want to grab that. I would say just grab it, because this is a guaranteed 10 rupees. You can route this in. You'll always have 11 ru or 10 rupees leaving this room. Every single time. Put money on the- money in the bank, you always have 10 rupees. On Double Hundo, you don't really need the money. Um, you'll be buying a blue candle, arrows, and bait, and that takes exactly 200 rupees to do so. So with Double Hundo, you've already got your money for your shopping. That's all gonna go towards arrows in level 7, and you might want that. Uh, arrows are a valuable weapon later in the game. So we have a count of 4. If I kill all of the keys above me, and all three of the keys on the right, my count's gonna go to 10 and I'm not gonna get my bomb. I know this because I've been keeping track of my count. So really, you don't wanna come in here with a count of four. A count of four is bad. 
Let's pretend I did not get accounted for, because in a real run, I wouldn't have killed all those zells or those gels. I would have just came and got through the ladder clip. So let's say I only killed three. By the way, you can go to uh, buffet menu two and come down to streak and make that three if you want. Um, so we'll adjust the global like I killed three of the zells. So as you see, there's eight keys in this room. Three are going to spawn above link. Three are going to spawn by that door. As you come across, you can do something like that and get out. There's, this is a Chevy room. If you want to see what it looks like, um, let me let me save real quick. That way, I don't screw everything up. This is what this room looks like. If you want to see it. So as you come across this area right here, you're gonna sort up and kill those three. And then you're gonna come across this area. It has to be here. You can't. You can go up here, I think. Yeah. But just aim for here. Aim for the door, and you'll get through every time. And then when you get to here, go up and stab. And you want to kill enough to get you close to nine. You just want to be close to nine. In this room, cool little trick. If you hold down and right, you'll just walk right around the blocks. Again, this is another dark room. There's a block here and a block here. So just hold down and right. You'll get through every time, and then you can come down here. Okay, so now this room, we have a count of eight. Eight's good. There's typically three different patterns you're gonna get. This is the best pattern. We have all of the buyers going to the middle. I can drop a bomb and we killed four buyers in one turn, which if I've been ready for it, that can happen too though. Buyers react differently depending on where Link is. Just be used to that. But the one most important thing here is you wanna leave with as many bombs as you can. Um, and you also want to try to keep your beam swords for Gleok, and I'll show you why in a moment, but um, try not to get hit. Try to get your forced bomb. Try not to sword more than one buyer at a time if you can help it. And if you happen to get the pattern where they split up, like say there's a pattern, the, one of the more common patterns that you'll get is the buyers will split and there will only be one in the middle. There's those three buyers that are jumping right now. I'll, I'll point them out to you real quick. Uh, this guy this guy and this guy sometimes they'll jump in the opposite direction the one right here is the one you're going to bomb almost every time you'll almost always get that virus so if you have a count of nine you almost always will get a guaranteed bomb unless you just get really bad luck or you place the bomb badly or you take a hit um you really want to try to get that atomic where you kill four or even five with one bomb but if you miss get out of there don't panic make sure you do not take a hit you do not want to lose your count Drop your bomb, kind of walk to the side, read the room, and then after you get your bombs, just calmly, collectively clear the remaining buyers, focus on one at a time, push the block, and now we go fight Gleok. Now, Gleok, welcome to probably the hardest room in the entire run, outside of perhaps the rumor requirement from a combat standpoint. If you don't already know triangle strats, I'm going to give you a quick quick rundown on triangle strats but this room will you will lose runs in this room this is a very difficult room i still die in this room uh pretty much everybody who runs this game still dies in this room and without white sword you have a lot more hits to do the white sword kills the first head of gleok in eight hits i believe is it eight hits or is it seven hits Oh, no, it's five hits. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I don't know where I was getting that number from. The white sword is five hits for the first head. I, I honestly don't remember. It's been so long since I fought him with a white sword. I'm not really sure. Let's do it real quick. I think it's five. And then two? Three. Five and three, okay. Five and three with the, the white sword. And then it's three and one with the... Or three and two, I'm sorry. Three and two with the magic sword. Um, with the wooden sword, it's 10 for the first head and 6 for the second. This is a difficult fight, and every time he hits you, it's going to take away a full heart. His heads that are attached to his body and his body will only do uh, 3 eighths of a heart of damage. It's uh, the only enemy in the game that does that. Um, you can utilize that if you need to, to avoid taking damage and use your iframes to get away from him, or just to not take damage, but I wouldn't do that. Not, not when you're just trying to come over from two first. You don't want to do that. So basically, when you get into this room, as soon as that door shuts behind you, you can get a free beam in and pretty much get a free hit. 
if you have beams. If you don't have beams, don't do this, obviously, but as soon as that, that door shuts, hold right and beam. Um, and you'll pretty much get a free hit. And a lot of the times, that fireball is going to fly over the top of you. If it doesn't spawn right away, you might want to be ready to dodge. But if that fireball comes out right away, that's the best pattern, by the way. That's what you really want. Because now you can get in position below him. Her, excuse me. And just kind of do this. Especially if you have beams. This is like the, the strat I like to call the cheese strat. Now, you might be thinking, holy crap, you're making that look easy. It's a lot of practice. Um... I'm going to show you a couple strats, but first and foremost, I want to show you this. If I'm on this tile, or this tile, it's really hard for Gleok to hit me as long as I'm watching Gleok. The biggest thing I see a lot of new runners make the mistake in this room is they're watching Link. If you watch Link, the fireballs are going to spawn in your peripheral vision. You do not want to do that. You want to zero in on Gleok, and you will always see those fireballs spawn, and then you can use your muscle mem your muscle. Uh, reactions, your fast switch muscles to just dodge. You should be able to dodge this fireball all day. As long as you're watching Gliok and looking for that fireball, even if you get up close, you can still dodge. Like, I get real up close. As soon as I see the fireball, I can dodge. It's just a quick change of directions, all you have to do. So it's not that bad. The other thing is Gliok has a really weird hitbox. Uh, Gliok's hitbox is slightly skewed to the right of your screen, Gleox left. So if I stab up right now, I don't hit him, but if I go over here and stab up, I hit her. It's kind of weird. You can use that to your advantage. Uh, one thing I like to do, and a lot of runners will do, is they'll work their way right to left and then reset the room. Kind of like a typewriter. Another, another strat they'll do is the triangle strat. I'll show you both. Um, beam sword, you're gonna get a couple extra hits in right here, and then you're just gonna set up for some quick stabs. This is what I like to call typewriter strats. Now all I'm doing is I'm watching Gleok. Okay, that hit was kind of unavoidable. See how I did that right there? I took the hit off of Gleok's head to avoid taking the full heart of damage from the fireball. That's a strat you can do in order to avoid taking that heart of damage. Just keep working your way left. Try to avoid the head. Take your time. Now, one other thing you want to make sure is try not to dilly too much in this room. I said take your time, and that's true. But if you, the longer you're in this fight, the higher your chances are of getting killed. You do not want to be in this fight for very long. Just get the fight over with. If you're on the last few hits and you've got health, just go after her. Um, if you have beams, you can do this. You can even come over here if you want and just kind of deep down like this. It's a little slower. But as soon as you get hit, just get in her face. See, that's not that scary. Uh, the one other thing you probably already know this, but if you don't already the fireballs can only spawn one at a time As that fireball is on the screen, Gliok cannot spawn another fireball So fighting her from down here You're gonna be more likely to be dodging fireballs quickly. See how quickly they're coming out, but if I'm over here Look how much longer I have to set up Especially if they're going diagonally like that look how much easier this is than if I'm down here and they're coming out quickly Sometimes that timer is a troll, of course, in a tutorial. At least, but... So just keep that in mind. You just want to get in and out of this fight. So triangle strats are more like this. You just kind of pick your spots when you know it's safe to attack. Go up and poke. Remember how I'm telling you to do the, the escape, the whip. You're whipping. You don't want to just come up in her face and stab like this. You can, but it's dangerous. You want to whip and get out of there. Whip and get out of there. You're kind of just poking it. Hopefully, I'm down to a couple of hits. I'm just gonna kill her get it over with 16 hits is required pick up your heart container and We're done with the hardest part of the entire run for three first level four congrats By the way if you get this in a run if you get to this point That is one of the hardest if not the hardest part of the entire run the rest of the run is pretty much exactly what you're used to already just a few differences with like not having the white sword and a few different screens so another optional screen scroll here i don't want to take a hit another optional screen scroll here now counts are important still depending on what you're running if you're running the double hundo route you want to leave level one with eight bombs 
Uh, the rule of thumb is however many bombs you're going to be leaving level 1 with is typically how many bombs you're going to have in level 5. And since we're doing the double hundo, the double hundo route, you're going to be going 3, 4, 1, 5. Um, you really want to leave here with 8 bombs. Double hundo, you're going to have a little leeway on that. If you leave with 7, you're going to have 8 bombs for the room requirement, the Olive Garden, whatever you want to call it. The recorder room. So, it is important to have a count here. But not paramount. It's important. You want to try to leave here with seven bombs. Whatever you kill in the overworld after Gliok, because more than likely you're going to take a hit off Gliok, right? Gliok's hard. If you're not sure, you can take an intentional bot. But if you got hit at all during the Gliok fight, as long as she didn't hit you after, or she didn't drop a, an item that was forced, like a uh, bomb, fairy, or rupee, and your count will always be one leaving Gliok. So whatever you kill on the way here, my count's two. I killed one Octorok. Counting Gliok, my count is two. We're gonna do the pirouette. We walk outside the dungeon. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. The door has opened for you. So we're just gonna get through this room. No big deal. We're just gonna sort these guys out of our way. And in this room, Shouts out to Redbird Grad. One other thing I'm going to link in the description down below is a link to the Red Candle page with all of the room by room strats that Redbird Grad, Yunos, Dr. Blue, BTs, myself, and a bunch of other runners, Prez J. Polk, a bunch of other people have been working on um, to give you guys very detailed room by room strats. They are awesome. They are long winded for most new runners. So if you're a two first runner going to three first, you may not want that much information for one room. And that's fine. For, not, for right now, that's fine. If you want to get down to the low 29s or the high 28s or push for record, there's a lot of strats that you do want to try to learn. And those tutorials are great for that. But if you're just trying for a 30 or maybe a sub 30, you don't need to know too much about like the intricacies. But... Those intricacies will speed up your progress. They will make you a better player. They will make you a more knowledgeable player. So I do recommend once you get the hang of this route to check out Redbird Grad's room by room strats in rooms that are giving you problems. This room is sneaky. It's not a hard room. You might take hits. You might lose time. But why this room is sneaky is because of our count. There's a very prime bomb force opportunity coming up right before the bow. There's a room with three gorillas. If we get our count set up properly, we can get a almost guaranteed bomb every single time in that room. Our count is two. If we get through this room flawless, our count's gonna be seven. If we don't, no big deal. Just make sure you keep track of your count and you have a very easy bomb chance coming up very soon. So as we come in this room, you're gonna wanna stay in the, in the two mid tiles as much as possible. The strat that I use and a strat that might work for you is to go directly up to that south post that's in front of Link and stab him up towards the wall. Remember, that hitbox is pretty big, so I'm going to aim my bomb towards the bottom of the second tile from the top, pretty much right about in this area. In fact, let me make that a little smaller, a little more realistic. It should be close to the actual size. Yeah, it's almost right on. You don't want to get it right about there. And, dude, can I put that right there? That'd be sweet. Dude, I almost got that perfect size. Look at that. Sweet. Um, and that will help you in not only clearing this room quickly, but you're using a bomb to blow open the wall. You maybe take out four or even five south posts with one bomb. Sometimes you won't take out any. It happens. This, this room is tricky. South posts are weird. All you're going to want to know is knock them back, bomb the wall, and then clear out the survivors as quick as possible. Remember sword whips. Now, we're staying in the middle. If you have beam swords, that's really easy. Stay in the middle, finish off the survivors. One thing to keep in mind is every single time you walk to the edge of the screen and back, that's about a two to two and a half second time loss. It's a lot of time, a sneaky amount of time. Don't believe me. Watch the timer. I'm gonna start when the timer gets to 26. I touch the wall at 27. By the time you pick up whatever you came over here to get or finish off an enemy and get back to this area, you've lost anywhere from two to three seconds or more. So if you have beam swords here, use them. Sometimes this room is just going to go that way. There's not much you can do about it. You're just going to want to try to stay in the middle as long as you can. 
If you get lucky, they'll all go around that bomb and you can clear them very quickly. My count is seven. Try to keep your count. If you lose your count, this next room gives you an opportunity to start over, but it's kind of annoying and you'll see why. This is the gel room. And these little bastards suck. They move very unpredictably and they're annoying and they have weird hitboxes. Now our count is seven. We don't want to kill more than one or two of these guys. Preferably one. We kill two, whatever. You kill three, and we're gonna get a five rupee. Um, so try not to. My strategy is just to go right around the block in the middle. Uh, sometimes on the half tile, sometimes on the full tile. It doesn't really matter. You just want to get out of this room as quick as possible without getting hit. As quick as possible without getting hit. That guy's gonna come up and get me. That was perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. Just get out of the room. Practice this room a few times. Get used to how they move. They're annoying. They're random. They will ruin your counts. Um, if you do lose your count in the Stalfos room, or if they hit you immediately, which can happen as well, there are five in this room. You can kill all five. If you really need bombs, say you're low on bombs here, you could even kill a couple of these Stalfos in this room. But do not kill all three. Do not kill all three your first trip in. The way spawns work in this game, and I'll try to keep this layman's because... It's very complex, and most two first runners may not know this, or they may not care about this. Every time you clear a room of enemies, if you return to that room, no enemies spawn, and what that does is it resets the spawn counter. It will change the spawns in the dungeons until the spawn condition has been met to return them to normal, and that condition changes depending on how you've played the levels. However, if you haven't cleared the rooms yet, the spawns do not change. It's a weird, it's a weird quirk in the programming, basically. Uh, as long as there's one surviving enemy in a room, the other enemies will never respawn unless you leave the dungeon. And the spawns themselves will not change. But if we clear all three of these Stalfos on our return trip, it's going to change the spawns. Now all we want is that key. So we're just going to go up and try to sword through him and go through on iframes. Easy. If I needed to kill a couple of these guys, I could. I could kill him. I could kill one of his buddies, but do not kill all three. In this room, we're just going to come up here. We have the ladder on, on, on three first. You don't have the ladder on two first. So this room is a little trickier. You might have the white sword. We have bombs, and we're going to use this as a chance to, to force some bombs. So we're going to come up. You're going to go on the half tile immediately. Go up over the water, drop a bomb, and then if you want to get killed, you can drop another one there. We got a random and a force, and we are in the money. Do not... See, we came in here with five bombs. I know I'm getting a force. If you weren't sure, just sword that guy off the ladder. If you're on this, this, this ladder right here, you're probably safe. Sometimes you can get trolled, but it's rare. Um, and we killed all three of them on purpose. That sets up our spawns for later. We, we wanted that key. We need that key. So we killed them on purpose. Block clip in or go around and push the block. And you got the bow. Now, the rest of this dungeon is pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to, you can force a bomb on, on Aquamenace. We have a count of 14 right now. Um, you could set up your count on 19 if you wanted to, so that your count would be 20 when you kill Aquamenace with a bomb. And again, I'm not going to go into too many strats here. This is where the routes start to kind of converge a bit. Um, the White Sword changes a lot in the beginning of this dungeon because of how it kills Stafos in one hit. That is... A rarity? But that can happen. Just be aware of that. Um, not a big deal in this case. We already got our bombs, so it's fine. It's just a time loss. But if you're, if you're nursing a count here, be aware that those gels can do that. I wasn't paying attention, and that hit me. Um, you pay attention in this room on your return trip. Sometimes those guys will hit you. Black Attack likes to come down this way sometimes, and he'll kill a few of them and pick up the map. But you could kill a few of them if you needed to get your count where you need it. These guys will normally just ignore you. If they hit you, whatever, you know. Just try not to get hit. Usually they'll ignore you. Come in this room on the half tile, pick up your key. And again, we're not going to go into too many strats of Aquamanus. We're just going to get through this part, because this is pretty much the same as normal. Sword Bomb Sword is the best. There's a ton of different ways that you could fight Aquamanus. That's not why we're here. The, the biggest difference between White Sword and Wooden Sword, if you don't use bombs in that room, is... Um, 
you're gonna take six hits to kill him instead of three. It's the biggest difference. All right, so now double hundo. We are headed to level five. Um, if you need to, you can get the white sword after this level. But honestly, if you're still getting the white sword, you probably want to stay on uh, on two first. Um, three first is a pretty advanced route. And you probably could save more time by just getting used to the combat and stuff on two first and getting better at not needing the white sword as much. You're gonna get this heart container, by the way. You need this heart container, so bomb this open, get this heart container. You kinda wanna keep a count here. Um, it's, I would say it's more important for uh, runners who are going for like sub 30 to keep your count going up here. Get used to keeping your count here. Uh, but there's a good chance you're gonna get hit anyways. It's fine if you don't remember your count. Um, but you probably want to keep your count. Uh, the 30-30 route, by the way, below me on this, below this screen, there's a 30 secret. You would pick this 30 secret up and then you would go buy your blue candle. We're not doing that today. If you want to do the 30-30 route, you need 30 rupees by this point and you need to get that 30 secret. Then you could buy your blue candle. That's a different route. It's very similar, but we're not going to talk about that route today. We're just going to do double, double hundo, which is the route I recommend. Just scroll over here. Come up on this tile and enter the screen on this tile, and these guys will never hit you. And just go up against the wall right there. You see what I did? Let me show you one more time. Watch what I do with Link. I'm gonna go up the half tile. So I'm gonna go in on this tile, and then as soon as I pass this P-hat, I'm gonna press up and right. And you'll go through every time. Hold right. Then press up and right. Turn trip, easy peasy. The screen scroll by. Go up these stairs. They look like ladders, they're stairs. Don't have me, bro. Uh, if you don't have a count going, you can start killing these guys. It's slow, it's dangerous, you're likely to get hit. Just try to get in here and get your and get your candle. The red candle route's a little different. Uh, again, we're not going into different routes here. This is just the route I recommend to new runners. Uh, the double hundo three first route. And that's just my opinion. There's tons of opinions out there. This, this is why this game is so great. Uh, enter on the top of that Armos, and now we're in. We have a count of seven. Now, on this route, bombs are not that important. Leaving level five. Optimally, we're going to want to leave this level with one bomb for Dig Dogger. And you can even get a free menu on Dig Dogger if you do so, which will save you a couple seconds. Um, but surviving and getting through is the most important thing. We're going to get a free bomb pack in the next room. So preferably I kill this Gibdo with the key. We, we do that intentionally so that when we return, there's no Gibdos that spawn above the river. There's a river right below where those two Gibdos up top are spawning. Um, it makes this room faster on the return trip and easier to deal with. But if your count is high, you can skip them. Just keep in mind, it's going to make a slower room later. Try to hit this guy over towards the left wall. You might get lucky and be able to bomb him to kill him. Count's eight. Okay. So my count's a little higher than I wish it was. It's gonna make it a little tricky when we get to the, uh, when we get to the, um, the staircase coming up, but just do the best you can. If it goes over, it's fine, but you really want to enter the Olive Garden room of requirement, recorder room, whatever you call it, with a count of as close to nine as you can. Anything lower than four, you're not gonna have a bomb chance no matter what. And obviously, if you get a count higher than nine, you're not gonna get a bomb chance either. And optimally, you wanna force a bomb in that room. Again, it's gonna take a lot of practice. I've practiced this room so much, more than any other room in the entire speed run. That's why we call it the room of requirement. It's a pain in the butt. You'll lose runs in this room. But this is for Gibdo, and this is the most underrated room in the entire speed run. This room is almost as important as the room requirement because of those counts. If I get hit by Gibdos here, I'm going to lose my count and I'm going to lose two hearts. I do not want to get hit. I just want to get that bomb and blow up the wall. So hopefully he does a, me a bro service. I got a force bomb here. Now this is a special scenario. I got a force bomb. If you get a random bomb, you can do that too. 
uh, you can leave that bomb, and when you come back, one of the Gibdos will have it on them. That is an option you can do. But if you're worried about that, you can just go around, ignore these guys, just try to get this bomb. It's kind of annoying. Something like that. And then you can bomb through. It's up to you how you want to do it. Something like that would work. However you want to approach that room, practice it. It takes a little practice. Block clip through. Our count is eight. Will the keys cooperate? It does not look like they're going to cooperate. We have to dodge these guys. Oh, they're being jerks. This is why having your count as high as I had it was kind of bad. Because if my count was lower, I could have killed them. I'm trying to keep my count near nine just to show you uh, what... In a real run, I would have just killed them and just moved on. It would have been fine. Well, hopefully. <laughs> But try to keep your count. I'd say entering level five with like a count of three or four is probably the best. Because then you're going to kill two to three Gibdos. That'll put you at seven. Seven's good, especially if you lose your beams. It's easy to kill two keys just coincidentally without beam swords. But basically, you just want to get to this room with as close to a count of nine as you possibly can. Now, remember that little targeting arrow I showed you earlier? If you don't already, if you're not already familiar with this, Dark Nuts are the most notorious uh, enemy when it comes to this mechanic, and I don't want to get too into it here. This is a route tutorial and not a strat tutorial, but I'll, go, I'll give you the layman's Cliff Notes version. Dark Nuts will target one of four things at any given time. Link, anti-Link, or they'll run away from Link, or they'll run away from anti-Link. Now, you might be thinking, anti-Link? What the hell is anti-Link? If you look carefully at Link's hair right now, you'll see a little orange arrow. Watch what happens when I unpause it. You see how the arrow went all the way across the room right there? That is anti-Link. Anti-Link is the exact opposite of the, of the entire screen, not just the play area, but counting the HUD. Imagine this HUD and the entire, the entire screen being your TV screen. Um, so if I go down here, it's going to show up in the corner because that's as high as it can go. But... It's really, it's up in the HUD right now. And the darkness are going to go after it. So let's see if I can show you an example of that. Where is it right now? Should be up there somewhere. I don't see it. Maybe it's not showing right now. Maybe it's up in the HUD. Is that true? Yeah, see there, there it is right there. See how it showed up? Now it doesn't move. Once it spawns, it doesn't move. It doesn't follow Link. So if I stand here and then I move... It will follow Link, but it will not follow Ant Link's anti-Link, if that makes sense. That's, that's kind of a complex way to put it. When it goes after anti-Link, anti-Link doesn't change. That arrow doesn't move. The arrow will follow Link, but see like right here how it stays put, but then it stays on Link, but then it stays put? You can use this to your advantage by doing what I call walk the dog strats, where once I lure a dark nut, I'll go up a half tile, um, and I'll try to walk, and hopefully they'll stay targeted towards me but they can't go up. That's against their programming. So they'll keep walking straight and you can drop bombs in their path. It's kind of a tricky move. But again, not gonna go into too much here. Just get, get used to bombing this room. The sweet spot's above the block. You wanna be in this area. If you get hit, it's fine. Just survive the, the fight. It's gonna take some practice. On the three first double hundo route, you wanna leave this room with at least one bomb no matter what now we have two bombs and that's pretty good actually if you have more than two you have a decision to make here's how i play it if i have three bombs sorry three bombs i'm gonna burn one on the gibdos on the return trip i'm gonna burn one just waste one and then i'm gonna use the third and final one on dig dogger which will automatically menu me to recorder for the dig dogger fight and i'll show you that in a minute Again, not going too much into strats, but I do want you to understand counts in this, this route. That's what's important here. It's not the room-by-room room strats. It's your counts. Um, if you have more than three, I wouldn't waste any. I'd keep them. Uh, one bomb is not really worth keeping. Two or more is probably worth keeping because we're going to level two next. Two has tons of bombs, but you can utilize those bombs to get bombs quickly off the gorillas. We'll go over that as well when we get there. If you have two bombs, use one on the, on the Gibdos. Save one for Dig Dogger, or if you want, you don't have to use one on the Gibdos. If you have three, you could save those two and use one on Dig Dogger. It's up to you how you want to play it. If you just want to be safe, save your bombs. You just lose a little time on your menu. If you have one left, 
Save it for Dig Dogger. Just trust me. Save it for Dig Dogger. You can beat Dig Dogger without the bomb, but you really don't want to do that. Dig Dogger does a lot of damage and it can be a big time loss and can be a major headache. That fight can be very easy. Another option, another strat is you can double bomb Dig Dogger. That is a slower strat, but if you're just trying to get through the fight, instead of burning your bombs, you can use two bombs on Dig Dogger. You just have to menu a few times. It costs about four to six seconds. That's up to you. It's 100% your call. Again, not going into strats too much. Just, I want you to understand what your counts mean on this route. Ah, oh, man, I haven't gotten any of the swag in this, in this run. No swag. Sorry, that means I'm just gonna get swag arrow, right, Kappa? Try to stay close to beams or full health. Uh, Dark nuts do drop a lot of health in this dungeon, so if you are in health trouble, you might get lucky. But this return, this room right here sucks. You just want to try to get through this room. Random Effect has a really cool strat that he developed for 100% that I use all the time. And that is, I hold down and, and right here. And then I kind of just read how they're going to move and get around them. Sometimes they're going to come on this bottom row and hit you. They do that. You can get around them by doing a strat like this. Let's see what I can show you. If you're holding down and sword, like right here, maybe. You can do that and get through them on iframes. But just get out of here. Whatever it takes. Or Gibdo. If you didn't get the bomb on the way in, get it now. It's free. Kinda. It'll take a little practice. You can steal the bomb by knocking the Gibdo back and then going through him on iframes. If you can't do that or you're having trouble with that or you're low on health and you don't want to risk it, you can kill Gibdo. Um, if you have bombs, you don't even need to pick them up. If you're low on health, you can just skip them. But the hard part of this dungeon's over. Don't die here. Whatever you do. You've gotten through the hardest part of the game at this point. The rest of this run is kind of like... I wouldn't call it a victory lap. It's definitely not a victory lap. But the hardest part of this run, in my opinion, is, is the 3-4 the combo and the rumor requirement. You've gotten the hardest parts out of the run outside of 9. But 9 is the, pretty much the same on these routes for the most part. Unless you're getting the blue ring um, or a potion. And I'll show you where potions are on this route. Because that's one thing a lot of runners... I, I should have probably mentioned that. A lot of runners are like, where do I get a potion? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a candle. So you can't get a potion until after level 5, really. Um, you can go out of your way to get a potion, but it's a huge time loss. Um, that's the potion on the coast. Um, realistically, if you still need a potion to get through 5 again, and I'm not trying to insult you... You might want to look at the two first route for now. Um, there's way more opportunities to get potions. There's way more safeties. And you have the white sword here. So in my opinion, if you are having trouble surviving this dungeon without a, without a potion, I would say go stick with two first until you can survive level five without using a potion. We have an extra bomb. I'm going to burn said bomb in this room. We're going to go down a half tile. Try to group them together, drop the bomb, and boom. There's a forced 5 rupee. You can pick it up if you want. It's just extra. On this route, we're rich. We don't need to worry about that. In some routes, we use these Dodongos to fill up bombs. I strongly recommend against that if you're on this route. It's a waste of time, and you risk doing something like that. You don't want that to happen. That's a rip run. Uh, most likely. I mean, it's not necessarily rip run. On this route, you don't need that bomb. But I'll show you why you want that bomb very shortly. The rest of five is pretty much a cakewalk if you know what to do. Just get through this room. In this room, there's some zoles and a little bit of a ladder's block. You just get through. In this room, the Gibdos are gonna cor they're gonna usually congregate right there. You can sword and get through on iframes if you sword late, and then just get through. If you're having trouble with that, you can go around or you can wait. Um, but just try not to get hit in this room. In this room, you're going to go left to half tile. And sword as you go up. That dark knight will come left sometimes. And if he does, you'll have to sword to get through him. In this room, you have two strats. I like to go through the Gibdo. Some people will go around like that. I like to go like that. But it's really up to you. It's your call. This room, just go down on this tile. And if any of them come down, just sword through. Be aware that there are patterns in that room that can get you 
Um, now, if you have beams in this room, you can get pretty spicy and do something like this. I don't recommend that. It's faster. It's risky. Just go down to the bottom. Usually, you won't have to worry about nothing. You just come up like this. Welcome to Dig Dogger. If you did, if you heard bombs are set up like mine, you're just gonna come in here, drop it, and toot. No menu. And just basically, you're gonna stay above Dig Dogger and just fight. Again, I'm not gonna go into too many details with strats, but you can see why this fight would be a headache without a bomb. Um, this, this fight absolutely sucks if you don't have a bomb. If you wanna get real galaxy brain, you can set up a nine count and double bomb him and force a bomb, but that is slower. It's up to you. There's lots of different ways to approach this fight. If you're out of bombs, it's fine. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have to have a very careful long fight where you could take a lot of damage, you might die. Remember pause strats, if, and I can't really do them here because I'm using the Everdrive and my save states are set to select. Um, that's what you're gonna want to do. You're gonna want to just survive this fight. That's why having a bomb here is so important. It makes this fight trivial. You just bomb, menu, recorder, and then stab four times. If you really, really want to, you can double bomb. Again, not going into too many details on strats. Uh, two first runners have to do this too, so you should be com uh, comfortable with it. Pick up your heart container and move on. And welcome to our first recorder toot. You're halfway through the run, just about, actually about a, a little more than a third of the run. So, world record route, we're going to turn right, and we're going to toot one time. That is going to take us to level three. As we warp here, we're going to press start, we're going to switch to the candle, and this is why we call this route Double Hundo. We picked up the Hundo on the previous screen, now we're going to pick up a second one. This is the stupid scroll. It's stupid because it's stupid. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, just walk the screen. It saves only about like a second, I think, to scroll the screen. Burn this bush, and then you notice all these guys spawning, right? Watch, watch what happens if I start getting lag. Oh, I didn't get it that time. Sometimes this shopkeeper will lag out for over a second. Similar to what you get in the blue ring shop. If you want to prevent that and not get hit by moblins, as you come up, make sure you're up on the top tile or the top half tile like I am now. Or you can just press up left as you enter this screen. Then quickly get over here, and from this tile, burn the bush you don't want to burn it too early because then the fire will hurt you you want to at least be here and usually you can get in before they spawn if you really want to get crazy you can get up here and notice as i walk up here the moblins start stop spawning temporarily that's because of the way the game works it doesn't want them to spawn right in your face and they were going to spawn there so if we go up high it delays their spawn until the spawns get over there the less moblins on the screen the less likely this lag is going to get you and also the less likely you're going to get hit but it's up to you how you want to approach that screen. Pick up your 100 secret. Head on up here. We're going to do the lagging wood screen scroll. This is required on this route. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, you can go through the, the lost woods. Just be careful not to get lagged out there. If you get any lag, just let off the D-pad for a second. And as long as you're over here, that, that Lionel's not going to hit me. Get set up for the ladder clip, and then we're going to go up. On this screen, there's almost always going to be a blue Octo Rock right there. You can do a little swag tank if you want. Come up here, and we're going to get our last Overworld Heart Container. Now, level two is almost exactly the same on this route as it is in uh, two first. The biggest difference is that we have to leave with eight bombs. There's no exception. If you're leaving with anything less than eight bombs, you either got really unlucky or you did something wrong. We're gonna pick up no Armo secret here. The Armo secret here is uh, required on 3030. But because we're doing double hundo, that's literally just a waste of money. Just let that moblin keep his money. Just leave him be. He ain't hurt nobody. We're gonna go down. Now, you can go left on this screen, you can go left on the next screen, or you can scroll, but if you scroll, Keep in mind that moblins might spawn in your face if the timer goes off while you're there. So I will probably scroll the screen, but watch. See how that moblin spawns there? You gotta be quick, otherwise they'll hit you. So for new runners, I would say just walk the screen. We have the candle equipped. We're gonna use the candle a lot in this dungeon. I, I usually block that because I don't like getting hit, but you can take the damage boost up if you want. 
again, we're not going to go into room by room strats here too much. I am going to show the differences in candle, though. I like to go up right here and throw a little candle beam out and do something like that. You can experiment, do some stuff if you want to mess around with it. But we're going to get through. Now, we have no bombs, so we're going to try to get bombs in here just like we would on two first. And I got one pack. So, reasonably unlucky, but I'll take it. Same thing here. We got candle. Might as well use it. We're going to do a little boom right there. Make sure you're on the full tile so that guy's going to come after you. And on we go. Same thing. We're not talking about room by room strats too much here. You can use the candle or you can switch to bombs. But if you're going to switch to bombs, make sure you do so before that counter gets to A. See, we killed too many. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you had a count of zero entering this dungeon, we just killed... 10 ropes so our count should be zero if we did not get hit by the gorillas if we got hit then that obviously throws that all, all all out the window but if you did if you did not get hit and you got that five rupee your count's zero here and you can force a bomb we got hit by the gorillas so we have a count of five coming in here so what i would probably do is something along these lines i'd shoot that fire out just for extra damage do something like this now we have a forced bomb Get your bomb, and now just finish this guy off. And get out. You don't need to get that bomb there, but it's nice. It gives you more bombs, so there's less pressure in this Korea room. Because, again, you cannot leave this dungeon short on bombs. This is the biggest boon to this route, is you don't have any bomb pressure in 7. If you do this right, you should always leave level 7 with at least one bomb for 6. If you do it wrong, or you make any mistakes you're gonna be in big trouble in level seven. And you don't want that. That's the reason we run this route is it makes level seven tremendously easier, not only because we don't have to get the red candle and deal with those spawns, but because of bomb problems. The other routes, the red candle routes, the canana routes and stuff like that have a lot of bomb pressure. We don't have that. God. That was not my greatest room, but whatever. I mean, again, we're not going into strats too much. Just get through. I didn't get a single drop of the heart and fairy in that room. That's crazy. That fairy was forced, by the way. Shouts out to Pronzo for this strat. I like to go left. Oh, and of course he goes left. Of course he does. <laughs> Sometimes at Gurria... There, I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're going to cheat. I want to show you what that room normally looks like. Let's go down. It's 4-4-C. Four, four okay. I, I used the, the, the buffet to go back down one screen, so I didn't have to kill those guys. So, we'll make a safe state here. I want to show you what this room is supposed to look like. Sometimes you get unlucky. The spawns change. Darn it. Uh-oh. I need them to be... Maybe it's going to be... Is that it? Zero? There it is. Something kind of along those lines. Let me try it again. Of course this is happening. This is typical... Uh, our typical tutorial look. There we go. That's a Pronzo strat. That's my strat now. Shouts out to Pronzo. <laughs> that's how that's supposed to look. Now, if this happens, don't panic. I screwed up. I got way too cocky here. I wasn't really paying attention. Do not start dropping bombs. You cannot smoke him if you drop more than one bomb at a time. You have to wait for the smoke to fully clear. Then you can drop a second bomb, get your bombs, switch to recorder. You don't have to do it here, you can do it after the level, but you're potentially wasting a few frames. And we're done with two. Two is pretty straightforward. If you do two first, you already know this. So now we're gonna toot our recorder one time to the right or up. That's gonna take us to four. Make sure you turn before you toot. If you do a frame perfect, you will recorder down, even though you're facing right. And that's bad, you'll waste like 10 seconds, so don't do that. Uh, you can recorder this screen if you want to get fancy. Don't get fancy, just do it. It only saves like three seconds, and it's stupid hard. Keep your recorder equipped. You're going to go up here. We're going to do the tricorder strat. There's old strats that have to do with killing the lever. We don't do that anymore. That's antiquated. We're just going to come up here, hold left, and then press A and B on the same frame, and you'll get through. And not only do we eliminate this, lo this lag the shopkeeper has, which you're probably already aware of, but we set our recorder to level three, which is really nice because it's like a free time save later. You save like an extra two or three seconds later in the run, not having to toot your recorder an extra time. 
and we get to uh, basically we replace the shopkeeper lag with the recorder tooth that's required anyways so it saves like about two seconds or so come down here get your arrows and I'm gonna show you arrow strats there's a, there's a, again a number of different strats in level seven don't worry about it now at this point if you're a two first runner and you're still watching this wondering what else is different honestly there's not that much I'm gonna go through the rest of the game um, but there is a couple things that is still kind of advanced that you may or may not be doing so I'm gonna finish the run and talk about it as we go but to be perfectly honest there's not much left that's different from two first uh, the biggest thing is the potion below one which I'll show before we go to nine. Um, that's really it, honestly. If you're a two first runner and you're familiar with the route, at this point, if you've watched this video to this point, we're an hour 30 in, you could probably stop watching the video and at least do the run. But again, if you want to keep watching, I'm gonna go over strats. I'm gonna show you guys some stuff um, that may or may not be beneficial to you. We're not going to be doing too much counting in seven right now. Advanced routes do count in seven, but for the most part, you're not going to need to if you're doing this route because you're going to have eight bombs here. And unless you don't get lucky or you make a mistake, you should be fine. You should absolutely be fine because level six is going to refill our bombs for the rest of the game. In reality, the next time we absolutely have to count is in level nine. But it's still good to count. You still want to try to keep your count. You never know when that's going to come in handy. Keep your, re your recorder equipped, head on into level 7. This room sucks. I'm gonna make a save state. Now, anytime a Gria is moving sideways or facing the middle of the room, be aware that they read your inputs, and when Link gets close enough, if that timer goes off, they're gonna throw that boomerang, and they're gonna hit you every single time. Blue Gria's suck. Case in point, I'll show you. I'm just gonna hold up. I got hit. See how that Gria was already facing left? So what I like to do is I'll pause right on that second tile to switch to bombs. I saw him throw that boomerang. I'm going to stop for a split second, and I'm just going to get up here. It doesn't work every time, and it does take some practice. Same thing here. Okay, none of the blue gorillas were going sideways. I thought I was safe, so I didn't bother. But I'll switch to arrows on the way up here. And here, just arrow up real quick. Arrow up, arrow up. Oh, oh, let me try that again. Something like that. That wasn't great, but you get the idea. Basically, kill that bat. Kill the keys. Get to this half tile. Arrow, 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 arrow. Sword if you have beams, otherwise use arrows. Two arrows and a sword will kill a Gurria. Hold up right here and watch to make sure that the do that dig dogger is not going to hit you. If the dig dogger is going to hit you, if you're going to walk into the dig dogger if you keep going, especially if you're worried about dying here, you can stop and wait for that fireball to boost you up and use iframes, or you can use the candle. Um, or you can just take your two hearts of damage. Dig Dogger does two hearts of damage. You don't want to get hit by Dig Dogger. Dig Dogger is mean. Just try to get through, whatever it takes. I like to drop bait as soon as that shutter door drops. If you're mashing B, you might be able to get it first frame. It wastes like 10 frames, right? But what that does is it guarantees that these blue gorillas are not going to hit you and you can get through. Sometimes that gorilla, the one that's right, uh, let me get the bomb out. This guy right here, sometimes he'll stop on this tile and he'll face down. You may have to soar through him. The bait strat is kind of a, a controversial strat. Not everybody does it. You don't have to do it. You can just go through. But see, he turned and hit me. If I drop bait, he's not going to do that. But if I don't drop bait, watch, he's gonna hit me. Just drop the bait. You already have to have it out anyways. It takes 10 frames. I do it, and I'm going world record pace runs or, or trying for world record. Just do it. It's it's 10 frames. Better than getting hit. In this room, sort up. Now, I like to face plant that bubble. If I'm holding up, sometimes you can accidentally iframe through and get hit. So what I'll usually do is I'll stop at the map and make sure that bubble knocks me back before I continue. Make sure you're in the middle of that room so you can get out. Now, watch that guy. Sometimes you're gonna get hit in this room. Welcome to the, the hard part of level seven. There's not much you can do. 
Um, just try to read the Griyas. Get used to how they move. Uh, get used to how they're going to turn and hit you. Sometimes they're going to hit you, sometimes they're not. Just get used to their movement. That's, level 7 is a sneaky hard dungeon. Um, in this room, if, the, if that Griya goes up to the very top of the diamond, he's almost always going to face down and boomerang you as you go around this staircase. So you may want to hesitate before you go through. If he goes right like that, you're clear. Drop your bomb. Make sure you do not miss that bomb. Make sure they're not going to hit you. Use paw strats if you have to. You do not want to waste a bomb in this dungeon. You have exactly how many bombs you need to get through. A little head damage here and there is not that big of a deal. Drop a bomb on Dig Dogger. On this Dig Dogger, we're going to double bomb him every single time because he's going to give us three puffs and we don't want to deal with that. So get out. Watch for the Dong Bro. If you ever have a Dodongo go right and you think you can get him with the bomb as you bomb the wall, it's not always going to happen, but just drop it and see if you can't smoke him like that. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. This room, go down. Stab left. Stab left. Don't panic if you miss. Remember, we're not trying to move towards the hands. We're stabbing, standing still, facing the hands. We're whipping our sword. Don't ever hold towards a wall master and stab. It's bad. If you ever get bubbled in that room on this route, you can switch to arrows. Remember, that's one of the beautiful things about Double Hundo, is that you have 20 more arrows. We spammed arrows in that room, and we still have 20 arrows to our name. Other routes typically don't have arrows to do that with, so if you are short on cash for whatever reason, you can use bombs, you can use the, the blue candle, but try to just stay down on that bottom, and whatever you do, do not get wall mastered. You're better off using your bombs, even your last bomb, than getting wall mastered if you're going to. That room takes practice. Again, we're not going to go into a million strats. There's so many strats for that room, and each route has different spawns and different strats. For now, we're just going to go. Try to get over here. Don't worry if you get hit. Just make sure that bomb lands. You do not want to miss that bomb. Do not use a bomb on Aqua Menace unless you got a bomb drop. For multiple reasons. For one, if you use your last bomb to fight Aqua Menace, bombing Aqua Menace saves about two to three seconds in combat that sounds great but if it's your last bomb you're going to lose that time back if you get lucky bombs in six in order to keep the run going and that's if you get the lucky bombs if you don't well now your run's dead and you didn't get your bombs if you do get the bombs you have to menu and that time loss makes up for the time save you had in this fight if you did get a pack of bombs or if you have beam swords there's different ways you can fight them i'll show you beams real quick oops you can, you can beam him here, go up, drop a bomb, and do something like that. Or you could just beam him from back here. If you don't have beams, walk forward, making sure he's not going to hit you with a fireball. Usually he will not. Usually you can just walk straight forward to the right. Um, if you have bombs, you can drop one, stab, bomb, stab, and go pick up the heart. Um, if you don't have bombs, just stab him six times. Again, at that point, this is bad luck. Just take your three second time loss. It's better than running out of bombs. Come around, pick up your Triforce, you double seven. Screen scroll through here. Now, on these, these screens, these uh, ghosts, they're called guineas. They don't have iframes. If you ever try to stab through them, they have iframes, but you can't walk through their iframes. So if you ever stab them, don't try to walk through them. They're the only other enemies besides Wizrobes that that does not work on. Um, so just avoid them. Pick up your magic sword. Try to keep your beams. It's important for six. There's not really any major differences here. Um, the biggest one's your bomb count. You may only have one bomb here. Uh, watch out for the shooting gallery. Make sure you have a clear shot to get in. And we're in six. We're just going to go through six. Again, it's kind of the same deal. Not really any major route differences here. Um, we're just going to get through. If you're short on bombs, stop in the doorway. Wait till they spawn and then kill them. You can get bombs that way. Belfry, you're going to want to start using your sword whips in this room, especially if you still have beams. See if you 
can't get lucky and take out a few uh, keys with your beam. Try to kill multiple keys with every sword swing, and that's how you do that room fast. In this room, this is the Magical Breakfast Room 1. Again, I'm not going to go crazy on strats here. There's so many strats for this room. Um, I'm just going to show you what I do one time. And you can copy my strats if you want. You can use other strats. You can watch World Record. You can watch a mid-tier runner. Um, if you're going to use bombs here, just keep in mind that if you don't get bombs, you're going to be short. If you only have one bomb left, do not panic if you get bubbled and use your bombs. Save that one bomb. You need that one bomb for the next room after this. But what I like to do is I'll hold up here, I'll sword like that, drop a bomb, do something along the lines of staying in the middle. I want to stay in the middle right here. Use your sword whips, avoid the bubble. Remember, you can't walk through whiz robes, but you can walk through uh, like like. And if you're about to get bubbled and or beamed, you may want to just face plant into a like like. It's better than getting red beamed or bubbled, because you got to kill the like likes anyways. It's a little slower. You obviously don't want to take any damage. You don't want to get hit at all. But it's better than getting bubbled. Getting bubbled is like, let's see how long that takes. Come here, bubble. About three seconds. Time loss. It's bad. Don't get bubbled. It will happen, you will get bubbled. If you do get bubbled in that room and you have bombs, you can use bombs, but just don't use too many, don't panic. Okay, so that whiz rope can spawn in front of you sometimes, you won't see them, it's a pain in the butt, just try not to get hit. If you do, it's whatever. That blue whiz rope that's facing up sometimes will fire a beam. The whiz ropes fire beams on a timer, that timer is random, it's based on the algorithm, it's not technically random, but you know what I mean. Um. Just try not to get hit. If he does shoot the, the FU beam, if you try to avoid it, sometimes that whiz robe that's above Link right now is going to fire. You're probably going to get hit. It's up to you. If, you. if you're low on health, obviously try to dodge it. But if you're not low on health, you might just want to tank it. Here's my strap for this room. This room, you're always going to have that one vire that's below the, the, the arrow. Almost always is going to go left. So just stab like that. You always kill him. Then I go up. Stab down, stab left, and then I'll just finish this guy off. I got bombs, sweet. That's one strat you can do there. Again, I'm not going to show multiple strats here. This isn't a strat video. Um, in this room, just be aware. The bubble can be a jerk. If you get bubbled in this room and you have money, you can switch to arrows, and the bubble will... Uh, the bubble can't take away your arrows. But make sure you save an arrow for Goma. You wouldn't be the first uh, speedrunner to use their last arrow in that room and not be able to kill Goma, and you certainly won't be the last. So, this room just sword like that. I'd like to come down right here. You can come down here if you want. I like to come down on this tile. But again, it's up to you. Practice. Check out some runs. You can sword that, that guy that appears in front of Link, or you can go up right here. But keep in mind that can happen too. I've died to a whiz rope doing that exact same thing in runs before. Switch to arrows in this room. I like to do it as I walk in. So what I'll do is as soon as I walk in the room, I'll show you. As soon as I'm about to walk in the room, right there, I'll pause and I'll switch to arrows. And I saw Goma go right. And the reason that's important is that from where I'm at right now, I can just go right, fire, and miss, of course. Of course I miss. This time he went down, interesting. Some sort of quirk with the timing. And we're done with six. Not really any major change. The biggest thing is just you won't have a potion. That's really it. Um, if you're needing a potion to get through six, you may want to consider staying on two first. That's really what it comes down to. We're gonna whistle down one time. That's gonna take us to level two. Because remember the tri sorter, the tri quarter, excuse me. <clears throat> put us in uh, level three, so that's gonna take us to two. One of the biggest mistakes I see runners make, even top runners, is they take time killing enemies in this room. I like to clear a few enemies out on the way to two, because it makes the screen easier on, on the return trip, because remember, we never cleared the room, we never cleared these enemies, they don't respawn. Until you clear all these enemies, these will not respawn. Just get out of here, whatever it takes, just get out of the screen, don't get hit. If you do, it's not the end of the world. If you did not get bombs, in level six. This is your best chance to get bombs. 
Especially if you saw beams. I'll just shoot a beam across the room like that. And I'll just kill these guys until I get my bomb drop. I got lucky you got two bombs there. Um, just shoot a beam and see what happens. If you don't get bombs, whatever. But if you don't get bombs on that screen, here's another chance. You can kill these guys. That's your backup plan if you don't get bombs. But you should leave level 6 with 8 bombs unless you got really unlucky. But level 6 is more stingy with bombs than, like, say, level 2 is. You should never leave level 2 with less than 8 bombs. But you will leave level 6 with less than 8 bombs sometimes. It happens. Uh, same thing. Route's pretty much the same. You just don't have a potion. If you need a potion, you can go get one from 1 before this dungeon. But... I mean, level 8 is level 8, man. It's, it is what it is. If you need to, you can go to 1. Get the potion below one and then come here. But this, this, this room, this level's tough no matter what you do. If you have beams, you can get a couple hits in when that happens. Just remember to always whip your sword. And just be aware that that kind of stuff is gonna happen. One thing I see a lot of runners do in this room. Oh, of course, of course. I'm gonna give myself beams again. Just for this uh, example. But one thing I see a lot of runners do is they'll avoid fireballs and walk right into blue dark nuts. Don't do that. The fireballs are annoying, don't get me wrong, but a fireball does two or a half-hearted damage, whereas a dark nut does two. You're better off losing the time, getting bopped by that fireball and it throwing your combat off, than you are getting hit by a dark nut. Because keep in mind, the refill at the end of this dungeon is huge. Not to mention this dungeon's hard to survive anyways. But if you get hit by a uh, fireball, you lose maybe a second. If you get hit by a Dark Knight, you're losing two seconds. Because three hearts, or two hearts, is it three hearts is two seconds, or is it two hearts is one second? The refill is bad. Does, just don't get hit. The more hearts you take damage, the higher your refill is. You don't want that. And this is the first level, other than maybe six or seven, that really a refill comes into play, because you have so much health at this point, that if you end up beating this dungeon with like a heart and a half, the refill is going to be huge. And at the, the two first level, that is a, a point where you may or may not, you know, actually care about your refill. And that might cause you grief. So if you are worried about the refill, just maybe practice those rooms a bit. Get used to dodging the... <clears throat> get used to dodging the, um, the dark nuts as best you can. Uh, if you get health, you can chase it down if you need it, but try not to chase it down unless you need it or until the room is clear. Again, lots of amazing tutorials in level 8 in Redbird Grad's series. Please check them out. They're so good. I like to come up here and just kind of pick them off like this. Nice and easy. If you have sword beams, you can whip like that, sword through them like that. If you don't have sword beams, Oh no, I don't have sword beams. Just hang out in this general area. This is where they're going to congregate. Don't panic. It's so easy for runners to panic here. And remember, fireballs do a half-hearted damage. Dark Nuts do too. Just try not to get hit. I like to sword down on that guy every single time. That's a free bomb chance. Plus, now I know my global. That was a bomb chance. I didn't get it up to you. If you're having trouble getting through that area, you can use bubbles to give you iframes. Just try not to get hit. I'm up. Sword through. You can go for the Gleok bomb here if you're short on bombs. Um, I would not go for the Gleok bomb unless you have less than four bombs here. If you only have one bomb... I think you'd be better off trying to get a count on the way to nine and forcing a bomb, even though it's a huge time loss. Unless you are comfortable with the fact that if you miss the Gleok bomb, your run is probably going to be dead. Because you need at least uh, six bombs, or you need, uh, let me think, a bomb to get into nine, a bomb to get into the first bomb room uh, after the last key, a bomb to get into next room, a bomb to get into the silver arrows room, a bomb to get into the trap room, and then a bomb to get into the final staircase of the game. So you need at least six bombs. You're also going to want some for combat. So if you have six bombs right here, I wouldn't even do it, honestly. Don't, don't worry about the Gleok bomb unless you really just want to optimize your level nine, but it's, it's advanced. I honestly wouldn't do this unless you were going for like 28, honestly. 
Like even sub 30, you don't need to you don't need the Gliok Bomb. Gliok Bomb is nice. Don't get me wrong. Gliok Bomb is nice. If you feel comfortable with it, it's not that hard. Basically, as soon as you get to the last hit before you kill the, the third head, like right here, you do that. But see, I got hit. Now I'm gonna panic and use a bunch of bombs and it's bad. Just don't do that. Remember the the heads don't do that much damage. Um, if you're worried about uh, taking damage, you can just tank those heads, and you'll only take uh, three hearts of da three eighths hearts of damage. So, if you're up in his face, tank off his head. Do something like this. See, I got knocked around at the end there, but I only got hit by two fireballs, three fireballs. The heart container. I wouldn't pick it up unless uh, Gliok knocks you within like a tile or two of it. Like if you're if you're over here and Gliok knocks you back with a fireball, you're right there. Just go down and get it. You know, whatever. But it's up to you. If you want that for safety, it's only about a two or three second time loss. And remember, triangle strats still work here. And pause strats are amazing. So yeah, you see where we're at right now. If I go get the heart container, I'm going to lose like four seconds. It's up to you. I wouldn't get it. Switch to recorder for a frame perfect recorder grab. You don't have to waste frames menuing out here. And we're done with eight. We're headed to nine. And try to finish this up in the next 10 minutes if I can. It's gonna be tough. In normal run, it'd be easy, but. Swag! Hey, I got some swag, finally. Ooh, he was close. All right, bombs of destiny guy. I don't know my global normally. If I'm short on bombs, or if he gets in my way, I'll just kill him. I missed the bomb chance, but I didn't get a drop anyways. But my count is two. Oh, by the way. Okay, so we're headed to nine. From the moment you land in the whirlpool, or the whirlwind, excuse me, your count is zero. Start counting. This is the most important part of the game outside of levels three, four, where counting is king. The thing is, unless you get a lucky bomb, you absolutely want to get a bomb drop, and I'll show you why in nine. Keep a count here, even though you're probably going to get hit. Even though you're probably going to get hit, start counting out loud now if you need to. Get a calculator out if you need to. Ask your wife to come over and count for you if you need to. Get some goddamn beans in a bowl. I don't care what it takes. Keep your count. Now, if this is really hard for you to do, there's a nice spot in the second room of nine, third room of nine, where you can reset your count and not have to worry about it out here. But it's better for you to just get in the habit of counting every ki every kill from this point forward until you s you get to the reverse C, pretty much. We got a lucky bomb. Whatever. Actually, I'm gonna take that away from me. I'm gonna take that bomb away from me. Hang on. I'm gonna pretend I did not get that. So we have five bombs. All right, so this room, again, shouts out to Redbird Grad. Showed me some cool strats here. I'm gonna go to the right half tile right here. I got a bad pattern, but I didn't have to worry about getting bubbled. I'm gonna bubble myself there intentionally as soon as I clear the room. Now my count is zero. I do this even at my level. It's up to you if you wanna do that at yours. In fact, if you're really cute, you can even get a damage boost towards the hole. But don't do that until you clear the room or you're gonna have a bad time. So now our count's zero. Count. I killed something there. Count's one. Count. I didn't even mean to kill that guy. I missed my clip. Count's two. Every single time you kill something, count it out loud. Count's three or four. It's four. Yeah, it's four. Count six. I got really unlucky with these like-likes. Let's do it again. Count's one. I got hit. Again, I'm not going to go into strats too much, but there's ways to get through these rooms depending on the patterns. Counts four. Watch out for the FU beam. You get hit, make sure you keep note of it. Counts four. Same thing, I'm not going to go into too much Patra strats here, but you're going to try to skip Patra one. Of course I skip them now, I never skip any runs. Count is four. Say it out loud. Do not lose it. Now, if you have beams, there's some cute strats you can do in here. There's also bomb strats if you have extra bombs. Bomb strats are risky, because we have exactly how many bombs we need to beat the game right now. 
So... It's kind of a, a risk. I still would do it, but... Really... You're just gonna want to keep your count. If you get through this room flawlessly with a count of four, you're gonna end up forcing a uh, rupee if you kill a keys. But this room is extremely difficult. You're probably gonna get hit. Um, so what I like to do is I like to do up the middle strats. I will go over like this to this spot. Do something like that. My count is nine. Now, that was really good. That, I, that, I wish I had that on my PB, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm gonna try not to do that good again. I'm gonna try to do it where I get hit. Oh no, I got hit! I got a lucky bomb, of course I did. Okay, so I got hit before I killed a single enemy. There's five enemies in this room. I know this already. I- you must know this. Two red whiz robes, three blue whiz robes. Let's pretend I didn't get that bomb. Let's take that bomb away from me, in fact. My count is five, and I know this because I got hit. Six, seven. Watch out for the bat. Don't let the bat ruin your day. If you get hit here, you can go back into the stairs and get your count up. Or you can utilize the, the candle to get your count up on the Zoles. Um, but it's going to change your spawns. It's a literal, I wouldn't do this unless your run is about to die situation. You need three bombs leaving the Zole room. If you're not 100% sure of your count, don't bomb. And I mean 100%. Now, you might be thinking, oh man, but that room is so high intensity. How are you supposed to keep your count? Try to keep your count. Remember, you're counting out loud every time you kill something. If you, if you can't do that, just try to remember as, as you're walking down this staircase. Okay, I got hit by a blue whiz robe, but the red whiz robes were dead. And I only got hit once. Therefore, my count's probably three. As long as you know... And you're not over. That's the biggest thing. Like, keep your count in a range where if you make a mistake, like, say I wasn't sure about my count. Say I thought my count was three. It was really four. And I killed three keys. And my count's really eight. But I think it's seven. And I'm not 100% sure. Try to get a group of Zoles together like that. You'll get your bomb anyways. That is the most important bomb force in the game, besides potentially the one in level three at the very start. You need this bomb if you're going to do bomb strats in, in the reverse C. You might get lucky and get a bomb like I did. Uh, you might get a bomb outside of nine. You might get the Gleok bomb, whatever the case is. Um, you want at least, I'd say, probably four or five bombs to your name going out of this room. Six is really good. Six gives us... Um, Three bombs for combat in the reverse C, which is perfect. I'm going to show you the safety clip here. I, I do the three o'clock clip. I'm just going to do the seven o'clock for you guys. Just go down here, wait for him to clear out, and then just clip in right here. Try to sort through his, uh, his thing. If you miss the clip, it's usually safe. I'm getting lagged out, which is just bad luck. But you sometimes can get through there. The three o'clock clip is a little different. That's what I do. It's faster, but it's harder. Uh, the seven o'clock is the safest. The five o'clock you would think would be faster, but it's not faster to the point where it's worth it, honestly. Seven o'clock is typically safer. And again, I'm not gonna go into too many strats here. This is not a strat video, but um, most of the patcher patterns, seven o'clock is the safest. And five o'clock only saves like but it's like 24 frames or something like that. And it's much harder to execute and much more likely that you're going to get hit. If you're going to go for five o'clock, I, I would just say go for three o'clock or four o'clock or excuse me, three o'clock or five o'clock. Um, seven o'clock is the safest. That's up to you how you want to play it. In this room, a, a strat that I learned from lack attack that I like to do that I don't see a lot of runners do. First off, um, Yay, we got a whiz robe in our way. We're gonna kill the whiz robe, and I'm gonna drop a bomb. I keep getting gridded. I keep getting gridded, man, like really bad. Okay, it didn't work. If that blue whiz robe that's in the middle of the diamond staircase goes up, and I wish I could show this. As the bomb's exploding, you can sword up, hit him. The bomb's gonna hit him, and then you can finish him off. There's a couple reasons this might be good. If he drops health, 
and they do drop health, then you get some extra health, and that's nice. Um, you might get an indicator of your count, which is nice. But most importantly, if I come back in this room and I miss a reverse clip, that's one less Wizro for me to deal with. In this room, you want to hang down on the bottom as long as you can. Deke these guys down. Stop right here. Drop a bomb. Drop a bomb. And if you have an extra one, drop a bomb. And then finish off the survivors. Do not use more bombs than you should have coming into this room. You need to know how many bombs you have. Remember I said earlier that we had three. So I used three. Do not use more than three. Do not use more than the bombs that you have left. Because from this point forward, you don't have to count anymore. Your counting is done. You're in the home stretch. You don't have to count anymore. You're good to go. Unless you fuck up. Sorry. Sorry, I wasn't going to cuss in this tutorial. Unless you mess up. <laughs> um, if you... Uh, if you get... Uh, if you use too many bombs here, you're probably done for. There's a, there's a couple chances for you to get bombs on the red whiz robes, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Um, and there's only like three or four chances. So it's really a Hail Mary pass. It's only, only, only in emergency situations, you're out of bombs or you're low on bombs for whatever reason. Maybe you panicked and it happens. I've lost runs in this room. And I guarantee you every single Zelda runner has lost runs in this room with a respectable time. Anybody who's ran this game for a long time has lost runs in this room. Not because they've died, although that's happened too. Not because they lost time, although that's happened too. Because they used too many bombs. Do not panic. Stay calm. If the whiz robes scatter... Do not panic. If you get bubbled, stay in the middle. Don't go after them. Stay in the center of the sea. Do not chase after them. There are some advanced strats. For you, don't worry about that. Just get through the room. There's a, a, a double clip you can do here. It's kind of swaggy. You can, like, clip through this block and come up over this way. I wouldn't go for that clip unless you were halfway in the, in the sea and you were comfortable with block clips. But... That's up to you as well. That's a pretty advanced strat. It's it's tight to do. The bubble will control you. Um, all right, so reverse clip. This is the most stressful block clip in the entire run. It's not even close, especially if you're on PB pace. Your heart's pounding. Here's what you do. Overswarm taught me a really cool strat. I like to just tap the, the D-pad, and I practice this so that I know how hard these taps feel so that I can tap and get in position. If you overshoot the clip, you're in trouble. But I'll show you a quick backup strat that if you're ready for it, you usually can get through this room without getting hit. So as I spawn in the doors, I'm just going to tap, tap, clip. And you're in every time. If you miss the first block clip, like you overshoot it, just go to the second block and do the same thing. Tap, tap, clip. If you do, for some reason, miss both block clips, immediately bail low. You need your health. Bail low and kill the whiz robes. I, the, one of the biggest things I see a lot of runners do is they panic and they try to clip back in, and those whiz robes wreck them. If you have an opening, by all means, take it. But those whiz robes love to phase through those blocks, and if they hit you, they'll knock you out, and you're taking damage the whole time. You could, like, let's say, okay. Oh, I missed it. Oh, shit, I missed it. Okay. Wait for an opening. See, if I went for that clip, now I had an opening. You can do something like that. But just do not panic. Stay calm and just find an opening. Do not rush that room. Okay, this Patra, if you're, if you're able to get around the block that's above Link without getting gridded, you can hold up and right and you'll get out of here frame perfect and you might get Patra 2 skip. Um, if you get gridded at all, you're going to get hit twice. Um, there's other ways to do it and some runners will go up here and do that but if he goes left you get knocked back and you'll take two hearts of damage so I like to just go around the block and then hold up right but sometimes you'll get hit I was a bad patcher pattern I couldn't even get out of there frame perfect like that was almost patcher two skip but just try to practice that room you'll just you usually will take two hearts of damage anything more is just unlucky or you got gridded or you had bad luck or bad execution um dang so much for getting under two hours <laughs> We're just over two hours. Um, 
I do the safety clip here. The reason is these guys are annoying and they can swallow you up. So usually I'll just come over here. Uh, obviously, if you're on world record caliber level, you don't have to do this. But that's the safety clip. It's a little slower. It's a lot safer. In this room, if they get in your way, sword up. If they don't, just walk up. Hang a hard left here. If you're worried about those blue wiz those red wiz robes, you can hesitate for a split second before you go left. And they'll usually spawn in front of you, but sometimes they'll spawn to you left and right. If that happens, just be ready for it. Drop your bomb a little low. One strat I like to do is I'll drop the bomb, and if I have a clear path, I'll walk up. That way, if any of the wiz robes turn towards Link and fire, I can dodge and go to the doorway and get in like this. For this strat, 4 I Steven taught me a really cool strat. I like to come down here, and if I have bombs, I'll drop a bomb. Uh, one tile left and one tile below the red wiz robe there. And then I'll turn right and attack. Another strat you can do is face up right here. Something like that. We don't even need those bombs. We're going to leave them. We're going to spit on them. Again, that room takes a lot of practice. I mean, at this point, the only difference is getting the potion, which I'll explain in a moment. Okay, so this room, if the wiz robes ever spawn to the left of the block, um, you're going to take damage. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, the safest way to do it is to take one hearted damage and go up into the trap. Oops, I didn't mean to save that. Son of a gun. Like this, and just take the damage boost. It's faster anyways. Um, but if you're low on health, you may not want to do that. And in my case, I probably wouldn't have. Because if I give myself one extra heart of damage, or one extra heart, which is what my health was coming into this room, then Fast Patra cannot kill me until he hits me five times, which is unlikely. Fast Patra is a pretty advanced strat. I wouldn't go for Fast Patra unless you can practice it first, get the timing down. And if you have a potion, you might as well go for it. But if you don't have a potion, um, again, this is like a minor time save and you probably are going to get hit a lot. It's up to you. See, I got hit three times, and that was not very good. I had a bad pattern. Let's try it again. Man, just bad pattern. That wasn't even fast. Let's try it again. Man! Tutorial luck, dude, I'm telling you. Something like that. That's a fast patcher. If you don't want to do fast patcher, or if you just don't want to take the chance, you can go over here. The one biggest mistake I see a lot of runners do with Patra is they go way too aggressive by getting into his hitbox. Patra's head is always two tiles away from his orbits. So as long as you're two plus tiles outside of his orb of his head, you can always hit his orbits without getting hit. Let me show you. See where his head is and where the orbits are? Just watch his head and in your peripherals and keep Link that far away. Otherwise, you'll get hit like that. And the other thing they'll do is they'll get too comfortable and Patrol will move and those orbitals will come and hit you. So just, it takes some practice. Of course I didn't get the swag arrow. Nah, we're getting swag arrow, damn it. I didn't get any swag in this run. Please? Please? First try! Alright, so... That's a frame perfect arrow. Don't do that with your last arrow, or you will join the, the short list of folks who have done that on PB Pace and regretted it. Luckily with Double Hundo, that shouldn't be a problem. Not gonna go into a Ganon tutorial here. It's gonna be a very quick Ganon tutorial. The very Cliff Notes version. The first hit's always free. Uh, if he shoots an early fireball, you're gonna go on this path. Follow the bomb. Early fireball, you're gonna walk on this half tile. If he doesn't shoot a fireball, come up here, go over here, then face up. You can go on the half tile if you want. It's really your call. Um, if you're low on health though, just be aware that, that fireball can kill you. There's just sometimes that fireball will spawn when you're not expecting it and you'll get hit. Um, I like the half tile strat, but it's really up to you. Uh, do not pause in this room. 
once Ganon fight starts because the fireballs are weird and there's a chance you could end up with like a million fireballs. It's bad. Just don't do it. Uh, if you've never seen Ganon move, let me show you real quick. This is how Ganon moves. And yes, that's how his sprite really looks. He follows Link around, kind of does a little bit of a figure eight pattern, see? Reasonably predictable. And when we hit him, he will always spawn either there or over there. So it's 50 50 shot. There are some ways to tell where he's going to spawn. It's complicated. Um, I still don't understand them. It's hard to do it in real time because you have to recognize a spawn that he gives you with his sprite. And if you get that sprite and you recognize the there's it's like it's complicated. You ain't going to worry about that. You're just going to go up and stab him. I do a double stab method. If he spawns on the right, I like to hang out in the middle of the nose area. If you miss, don't panic. If you miss the first hit, just take a step left and stab right. And then just stop right here and just start sorting down. Um, if he spawns on the, the right, you can kind of hang out in this area. Let me see if I can show you that once. dodge the fireballs if you get hit it's let me do another one no stop spawning on the left oh by the way a ganon hug takes four fire four hearts of damage something like that ganon's gonna take a lot of practice that's basically the three first tutorial. Um, the TLDR three and four are really hard. Um, three and four are really hard. Keep your counts in five if you can. Get the 200 secrets. Um, like I said before, the first hour and a half of this tutorial was really the most important part. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, good luck in your runs. The Zelda 1 community is amazing. Again, check the description below. I'm going to link down there a link to the Zelda 1 Discord, a link to redcandle.us, a link to Order of the Eight. Um, in those links, you can find Redbird Grad's room by room strat tutorials, Darkwing Duck's extremely informative, slightly outdated three first tutorial. It's a lot more in depth on strats than what I did, but it's a little bit outdated. It's a great video still. Um, there's a there's so many tutorials out there This is simply just to help two first runners get the grasp of what they need to expect From the early game and then just a couple little things here and there the, the, the end of this video is mostly just like bonus DLC content, but I hope this helps Good luck out there Let's see those PVs fall. Good luck in your grind sub 30, baby. It's free You're probably like, yeah, yeah, it's free. It really is like once you get the hang of this game. And once you get the hang of this game, you'll be shocked. So good luck. I'm JSR. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on Twitch. So long, everybody.